Hello everyone. Hi. Hope you guys can see me and hear me clearly. Hi Vaishnavi. Hi Nan. Hi Shreya. Now, uh, the reason why I wanted to take this class is to talk a little bit about CAT 2021. As you might know, the notification has been released. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Prior to that, let me first tell you that my name is uh, Ravi Handa. I have been teaching for CAT for close to 15 years. I started the website handagafanda.com, which was later acquired by an academy. Through this website, I taught 20,000 plus students online. And now uh, via various mediums like YouTube, special classes, uh, pretty much similar to this one, and via plus courses, which are the paid courses on an academy, I conduct a lot of classes. In case you want to know which class is happening when or what the schedule is like, you can please go to my Telegram group, uh, which is, I've given you the link for it, t.me slash cat prep online. Through this, through this, uh, you can get to know uh, which class is happening when, what the schedule is, and all of that. Now, I hope uh, you guys noticed that the notification for CAT 2021 has been released. Vaishnavi, Shreya, did you get a chance to go through that? Okay, I'll, I'll just give you the uh you know important highlights so first of all the exam date has been announced which will be november 28th uh i think that should be a sunday because i'll just confirm open up the calendar so november 28th yes it is indeed a sunday the main point to note in this is that it will be conducted in three sessions it will be conducted in three sessions. Now, what I mean by that is, uh, you know, this ensures this ensures that the exam will be a two-hour exam. See, because they cannot have three-hour exams across uh, three sessions. You just don't have that many hours in a day because they will need to uh, plug in gaps between that. The, all the other details, uh, they are broadly the same. The eligibility, the reservations and all of that. I believe uh, similar stuff to last year that's going to continue here as well. The important dates that you need to keep in mind. The form opens up on August of 4th. Now, no need to fill it up on August of 4th. You can obviously wait it out. But the registration closes. It closes on 15th of September. So please try and get it done, you know, at least four or five days in advance. As I'm telling you, in the last 15 years, on the last day, there is always some problem or the other that occurs. More often than not, they do, uh, you know, extend the dates, but don't rely on that. that. That's not something that you can bank on. The thing is that these, uh, it will be select uh, across 158 test series. So most probably you will get a center uh, in your city. Uh, for card 21 okay and the other details are you know uh, pretty standard so you should have a mobile and an updated email account where you get all the necessary updates now that being said that being said as i was mentioning i conduct a lot of classes uh, on an academy which are a part of the plus course in the plus course, you get live classes, which are very similar to this, but you get them in a structured way. Say, for example, let me show you if I have the slide for the structured course. Yeah. So uh, my course, my course is actually starting on. So there is a new course or a new batch, which is starting on the 4th of August. In this batch, I will be focusing mostly on data interpretation, mostly on data interpretation. And what I will be doing in data interpretation, here it is. So this is my plan. As you can see, I'll be taking classes on every weekday. That is Monday to Thursday for a period of three weeks, which means a total of 12 classes, total of 12 classes. And the timing will be every day at 12.15 p.m. 
So that's the idea for the timings. And as you can see, they were the link for this. Um, let me see if I can find that. I do see it, but let me just open it up because see what happens is the link that I see and the link that I share sometimes needs to be a little bit different. Just give me one second. Here you go. It is live. It is live. Can you guys see that? Uh, you can uh, see the course on my profile and this is what I am planning to cover in that. Now, we'll start off with very simple, the introduction to can't click link on mobile. Yes, so it is live. It will be there on my profile. So you can check it over there. We'll start with an introduction to data interpretation, which is very, very basic. What exactly gets asked in data interpretation? Then we'll talk about the non-traditional ways to represent data. This is a topic which has uh, become pretty important in CAD. They'll give you a spider web diagram or they'll give you a triangle which is representing the data over there. And after that, after that, you'll notice we'll, we have a few classes on previous year questions. So I'll try to wrap up as many previous year DI questions in these classes. I also have classes on doubt clarification. So let's say if there are some DI questions you're getting stuck with. That's what we'll cover. We'll have a couple of uh, classes on pie charts and line charts and bar graphs and then logical DI. Now, logical DI is when the question looks like it's a data interpretation question, but there is a lot of logic that you need to use to maybe fill up that table or fill up that particular chart. That's what we'll be covering as part of this course. The goal is that if you finish this course from start to end, if you attend all of these classes, then you do not need anything else for DI. For Devash and I believe a couple of you who were there in my previous courses, you would remember that I took a course for LR and I honestly believe you don't need anything other than what I did in that course for LR. The only thing extra that I recommend doing is practicing a few sets from previous year papers. Very similarly, very similarly, this is a complete solution for DI. You do not need anything other than this uh, course for DI. Just do it from start to finish. Just attend all the classes. Over and above that, if there is anything that you need, will be a little bit of practice from previous year papers and whatever gets asked in mocks. You don't need any book for LRDI if you do these courses or anything else to practice for. So this is essentially the course uh, that I was talking about as a part of PLUS. In the iconic subscription, you get this particular course, obviously, but along with that, you get personalized guidance as well. This personalized guidance is provided by a one-on-one -on -one live mentorship program, which is given by I am Bangalore, I am Ahmedabad, and Calcutta, basically the top uh, B schools. Uh, if you're looking at CAT 2021, which I assume most of you are, I would recommend to go in for the six month plan, which is for 16,400. You can use the coupon code HANDA, which will give you a 10% off. If you're looking at CAT 22, then my recommendation would be to go in for the iconic plan, which once again, you can use the coupon code HANDA to get a 10% off. This is roughly 40K for this one. Now, this is the uh, broad agenda uh, for today. I'll take a uh, little bit of time, not too much, not too much, where we'll talk about the structure of the CAT exam for those of you who do not know. Then a uh, little bit of information about the syllabus, the various types of questions that get asked, score versus percentile, and a little bit about a prep plan. So not all of that. Broadly, these are the things that I need to cover. So first of all, uh, hope you guys know this. Now that we know that it is going to be a two hour exam, we can be reasonably assured that it is going to be similar to this structure where quant was 26 questions, VARC was 26 questions, LRDI was 24 questions. Not only that, what was the structure? Which section is important? Vaishnavi, all sections are important. You need to not only clear the individual cutoff, you also need to clear the overall cutoff. So you cannot do that by being good in one section or bad in the other section. You need to do a 
complete, uh, you know, you need to cover the complete picture. That being said, what's the structure of VARC? So out of 26 questions, bulk of it is reading comprehension. So there are 18 questions in reading comprehension, three for parajumbles, three for summary, and two for sentence exclusion. Now, for those of you who do not know what these words mean, in reading comprehension, you'll be given a big passage. From that particular passage, you'll have to answer questions which are based on it. Now, what happens is in lesser exams like SNAP or, uh, you know, MAT, for example, you will be given a long passage and then the questions which are there are direct questions. What I mean by that is you look for that phrase in the passage and you'll get the answer. On the other hand, most of the questions which get asked in uh, CAT, they aren't really direct questions. They are inferential in nature which means you will need to have a deep understanding of the passage that is given to you and then take a call on what the answer should be. What happens in bar jumbles? So in bar jumbles, what will happen is you'll be given four sentences, A, B, C, D, for example, and then you will need to rearrange them in an order to form a comprehensive paragraph. So suppose the order is B, D, C, A, you will need to enter that particular order as a fill in the blank, and that will be the correct answer. Very similarly, sentence exclusion also uses more or less the same idea. You will be given five sentences in sentence exclusion, and four of them will form a coherent paragraph. So four of them will form a coherent paragraph. Suppose. BDCA or BEDA form a coherent paragraph. In that BEDA, what you will need to do is, uh, so basically you need to spot which one is out of syllabus or rather, uh, you know, out of context, which is the sentence that you need to exclude. So in this case, the sentence that you need to exclude is C. Here, you would have answered the questions as BBCA. Here, you will need to answer C as the answer. Yes, Utkarsh is absolutely right. Odd one out is also, you know, known as one of the categories for this. How many passages are asked? Well, that varies. But last year, last year, there were four passages which made up these 18 questions. I believe there were two passages of four questions each and there were two passages of five questions each. But again, not necessary. That part, uh, you know, might change, might change, unlikely, unlikely. But that's the passages. Kitan, that's what you were asking. Summary is left. Now, summary is kind of like baby RC. So in an RC passage, in an RC passage, you have large amount of text and then you have multiple questions based on it. In summary, there will be small amount of text and there will be only one question based on it where you need to summarize what is happening in the passage. The idea, the skill set that you need, like I said, the skill set that I need for parajumbles and sentence exclusion is the same that you need to look at sentences and arrange them in an order for reading comprehension. The and summary is the same skill set that you need, which is you need to see a passage, read a passage, and understand it correctly. How many passages are generally asked? As I said, there were four passages in last year's pattern. Can it be more than four also? Yes, absolutely, uh, it can be more. Number of questions in the exam, Utkarsh, here. There are 26 questions in quant. There are 26 questions in VRC and there are 24 questions in LR and DI. Is this uh, what you were asking? Okay. Can I go ahead, guys? Any questions about the overall structure or the syllabus uh, for VRC? If you want me to go ahead, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please ask.
uh saturn about your question on percentiles i will address that a little bit later in the presentation ketan there is no reading speed that you should target because the idea is that you should be able to understand the passage now if you unnecessarily increase your if you try to push an increasing on your reading speed where your comprehension falls down that is not a very good idea however it is widely considered that it should be at least 200 words per minute that is kind of the minimum that you should have to do well in the exam that's the minimum target that you need to have then what about the lrdi paper pattern now again this is based upon last year and traditionally lr has always had more of a weightage than di last year there were five sets which were asked three sets were of four questions each that makes it 12 questions two sets were of six questions each which is another 12 making it a total of 24 questions which were asked so three sets making 14 questions so that is 4 plus 4 plus 6 on lr there was one di set with four and one lr di combo what do i mean by lr di combo now these type of questions are you know a little bit on the harder side large amount of data is given to you and there is some data which is missing and you need to use your logical thinking concepts to actually fill that missing data it is not just pure di pure di what happens is data is there if you can interpret it if you can understand it what's happening over there you will be able to answer the questions i since i am taking a di course since i am taking a di course i will be covering uh, you know i'll be taking a passage on di towards the end of this class to explain it a little bit better about quant about quant again arithmetic remains the most far most popular category with nine questions algebra and geometry are at the second level which is 6 6 modern math and number system are lesser important at 3 and 2 now it's not necessary that this will maintain it's not necessary at all that this will maintain uh, because we only have data from cat 2020 for this but if you look at traditionally traditionally arithmetic algebra and geometry these are definitely your higher priority areas modern math and number system have been traditionally your lower priority areas so whenever you are preparing uh, your priority should be towards arithmetic algebra and geometry versus a modern math and number system when it comes to quant in arithmetic can you guide yes i surely can so the most important chapter traditionally has been time speed and distance after that you have chapters like time and work because uh, you know time and work which will include uh, pipes and cisterns as well which will include pipes and cisterns as well so that's some these two are the more important topics then you have uh, questions on ratios and mixtures that would probably be the third category uh fourth will be profit and loss after that i believe you will have simple interest and compound interest then you sometimes also get questions on averages percentages and stuff but please understand the concept of averages and percentages actually are applicable in all of these other areas are applicable in all of these other areas is that what you were asking ketan so my suggestion my priority order would be time speed and distance and time and work these should be your top two priorities but don't waste too much time on time speed and distance have a look at the kind of questions uh, which get asked have a look at the kind of questions which get asked and that will give you a better idea geometry doesn't really have that much of a uh, bifurcation geometry doesn't really have that much of a bi bifurcation but still typically questions which are based on circles and polygons they are the topmost priority after that i will put a uh, mensuration and after that i'll put coordinate that's the order 
that's the order that i would say so 2d geometry with circles and polygons then mensuration and then coordinate that's the order that i would recommend for geometry can i go ahead and talk about percentiles or in case you have any further questions please ask Graphs and functions are a part of algebra. They are a very important topic as well. Absolutely, Ketan. They are a very important topic as well. They are a part of algebra. Now, a lot of people don't really understand the concept of percentile very well. So please know that percentile is actually an indication of how many people are behind you in a test. For example, for example, if 10 people attempt an exam, you are ranked 2, that means 8 people are behind you, so your percentile will be 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10, which is an 80 percentile. 2 lakh people attempt the exam, your percentile is 90, that means 90% of 2 lakh are behind you, which means 1.8 lakh are behind you, which means your rank is roughly 20,000. Now, if that is the case, if that is the case, can you tell me uh, something? Suppose 100 people gave an exam, you are ranked 1. What will be your percentile? Hundred people gave an exam, you are ranked 1. What will be your percentile? It'll be 99 percentile because 99 people are behind you. So basically, if n people gave an exam and your rank is 1, that means n minus 1 out of n, that's the percentage of people behind you. So this also implies that a 100 percentile is not possible. But you might have seen scores, you might have seen ads where you have seen students get a hundred percent time. So how does that happen? How does that happen? Utkarsh is absolutely right. It happens because of rounding off. Please see that if there are thousand people and you are rank one, then your percentile will be 99.9. .9. If there are 10,000 people and you are the topper in that, then your percentile will be 99.99. If you have 1 lakh people and you are rank 1 in that, then your percentile will be 99.999. And here is what you need to know and, uh, you know, be interested in. If you have a 99.999 percentile, your CAT scorecard can only display up to two decimal positions. And if it can display only up to two decimal positions, it will get rounded off and this gets rounded off to a hundred percent time. So that's how it happens. Here is some data from previous years. Here is some data from previous years as to what percentage score you need to get to get a particular percent time. So I don't really have the data for 2020 because I didn't get that many scorecards from 2020. But as you can see, broadly a pattern is maintained. When you score roughly around one third, you get a 90 percentile. Roughly around 40 percent, you get a 95 percentile. Roughly around 50 percent gets you a 98 or a 99. Very similarly in LR and DI. So this is the number of questions that you needed to do in LR and DI to get a 90 percentile. Point to note here, LRDI has traditionally been very difficult when you compare with verbal. For example, in most of the years, in most of the years, if you solve nine questions in LRDI, you actually needed to do 16 to 18 questions in verbal. So what does this mean as a lesson for you or as a target for you? What this means is highest priority should always be given to verbal because verbal is going to be the scoring section. If you are bad in verbal, you can never get a very, very good percentile. If you're planning to do well in the exam, you need to be really, really good in verbal and that's the only way out. So please keep that in mind. If you're studying for 100 units of time, dedicate 50% of that time to uh, 
verbal at least, maybe a 30-35% to quant and 10-15% to LRDI. Because LRDI does not require A, that much practice or B, that much understanding. It is a certain types of questions. As I said, uh, for the people who are subscribed, they can just stick to the course and that will be more than enough. But if you ever come to my quant class, if you ever come to my quant class, you will never hear me saying you just do the class and that is enough. I'm very sure you go to any verbal tutor, any verbal teacher, he will never tell you that just attend the class and that is enough. But for LR and DI, it can be said because in LR and DI, A, you, need to score the, you don't need to score that high to clear the cutoff. Utkarsh, yes, for the top colleges, let's say if you're targeting something in the top 20, sectional percentiles and sectional cutoffs are important. Beyond the top 20, sectionals don't really play that much of a role. Okay. Then, uh, you know, how exactly should you structure your preparation from now on? My recommendation is you need to dedicate 300 to 500 hours uh, towards CAT preparation, out of which your time should be divided in four broad categories, skill building, concepts, practice, and testing. Uh, let me just tell you a little bit about all of them. So skill building is stuff like vocabulary. You work on your vocabulary. Uh, you solve Sudoku puzzles so that your LR abilities uh, improve. You read a lot because reading will help you improve in reading comprehension. So all of that, uh, you try to improve your calculations a little bit. You know, do tables and fast calculations and stuff like that. All of that comes under the category of skill building. Concepts is, you know, the basic understanding. Obviously, that is needed for practice. I recommend a couple of books, Arun Sharma and Nishit Sinha. Both of these are pretty good books. Vaishnavi, once again, you can pick up any of, uh, you know, CAT preparation books. They're good enough. I honestly speaking, I'm not really aware about uh, any specific books which are useful for math. But I'm assuming and what I know, it's not an assumption that math is typically an easier paper. So if you pick up something like Arun Sharma or Nishit Sinha, you can just do level one uh, exercises in those. And that will be more than enough. For those who are targeting CAT, they can do level one and level two. Level three is not required for anyone. That is given just there to, you know, sell the books because tough stuff sells better. So you don't need that for CAT. Please keep that in mind. Or rather, 99% of you don't need that in CAT. If you are someone who is scoring a 99 plus in quant, yes, you might need to work on level three questions as well. And the same, uh, the mocks, as far as mocks are concerned, I think it's a little too early to worry about mocks, but maybe you should attempt two mocks in August and that will be good enough. That being said, this is my schedule for uh, DI. Uh, keeping in mind the two-hour paper, how many questions should I attempt in each section for 90 percentile plus? I'm sorry, Ketan, I don't really have that uh, data but typically speaking typically speaking if you look at the past history if you look at the past history for quant you cannot really say anything because it varies a lot for quant you can't really say anything for uh, verbal roughly half of the questions so if there are 26 questions 13 can be considered a safe bet and for lr and di it is roughly, uh, you know, a little more than one third. This is what 35%. So out of 24, if you can do two sets, uh, eight questions would be good enough for LR and DI. Eight questions would be good enough for LR and DI. This 99911 is out of 32. This 99911 is out of 32. So I'm thinking eight out of 24 should be more than enough to clear the sectional cutoff uh for lrdi quant varies a lot depends on how easy it is how difficult it is should i go ahead okay so this is a set that i have we have for uh lr and di as i said since my di course is starting utkarsh i missed that when can we start taking that mocks and uh, from where can we get these mocks? 
So Utkarsh, my recommendation is that now you should probably wait till the mocks are available uh, in the latest pattern. I believe an academy as a part of the plus course, I can see that you are subscribed, will have some sort of mock structure and mocks will be available. What you should do is you should have a look at the mock. If it is in the latest pattern, please go ahead, start practicing with it. I'm very sure that the mocks, I haven't seen the mocks from uh, an academy, but looking at the structure, the mock should be of good quality. So that shouldn't be an issue. And other than that, my generic recommendation about mocks is that in August 2, in September 3, in October 4, that's probably, you know, uh, the number of mocks that each and every one of you should take unless you are someone who is scoring consistently more than 95 percentile in the mocks. If you are someone who is scoring under 95 percentile, your first goal should be to get to 95 percentile and for that these many mocks are enough. Please do not think of mocks as uh, practice questions or practice set. It is a lot more than that. Because if you look at it as just something to practice, you will mess it up. Okay, let us go ahead. So uh, this is a data interpretation set. Please go through this information. Let me know. I will then uh, go ahead and uh, you know uh, explain the chart. Let me know when you want me to go to the next slide. DI starts from today only? No. So DI starts from 9th of August. My course. a sample so that I could take a sample. The multi-layered pie chart so is given to us uh, for LED televisions from a big retail electronics outlet during 2016 and 2017. So this is my chart for 2016 is on the right hand side. I hope the data is visible to you on screen. I'm just taking a sample question, Devash. I'll definitely cover this question in the course as well. I just wanted to take a sample so that people know uh, what gets asked in DI, what is the level of questions in CAT, and how they can actually get this information correctly. So what do we have here? We have data for 2016 and 17. Are all values readable? Because this is the best image that I could find. blur a bit um does zooming in help okay i will zoom as in when required so we have 2016 and 2017 for some months the sales figures are not given in the chart the middle layer shows quarter wise aggregate sales figures. In some case, aggregate quarter wise sales numbers are not given next to the quarter. The innermost layer shows annual sales. It is known that the sales figures for the three months of the second quarter, April, May, June of 2016, form an AP. Okay. Of the second quarter, that is this quarter. these numbers april may june uh, are in an ap that's what it is saying right 2016 april may june so total is 150 these are in an ap so that means the values for may will be 50 for june will be 60 i'll keep that in mind 
and the monthly sales figures in the fourth quarter october november december so fourth quarter is october november and december uh, 100 and 360 so that will be 100 november will be 120 and december will be 140 are you guys okay with these values 50 60 120 140 then let's try and fill up the quarter values as well so not exactly sure how the zoom thing works here but for quarter one it's 80 60 and 140 80 60 and 140 so quarter one is 240 quarter 3 uh, 75 120 and 55 so 75 and 55 is 130 130 plus 120 is 250 and this total is 360 now 360 plus 240 is 600 150 plus 250 is 400 so 2016 comes out as 1000 are you guys okay with 2016 coming out as 1000 If everyone is okay till here, just give me a thumbs up. What I've done is I finished up the complete table. I finished up the complete table for the right hand side. For 2016, I have all values. I have the values for all the months. I have the values for all the quarters. And I have the value for the entire year also. How did I take 50 and 60? Because it's given to me that April, May, June, they form an AP. So one value is 40, the next value will be 40 plus D, the next value will be 40 plus 2D and my total is given to me as 150. Look at this, total is given to me as 150, values are in an AP, that means the difference between them remains a constant. So 120 plus 3D was 150 which means D was 10. Very similarly, I have done it for quarter four also. 100, 100 plus D, 100 plus 2D, which is 300 plus 3D is given to me as 360, which gives me the value of D as 20. Are you okay with these values? So that's why it became 100, 120 and 140. Okay. Let's try and fill up the rest of the information if we can. Let's zoom in a little bit. So quarter two. For quarter two, I have 65, 75 and 60. So 65 and 75 is uh, 70 and 70, 140. 140 and 60 is 200. Now, for Quarter one, quarter one, I have 160, 100 and 120, 160 plus 100 is 260, 260 plus 120 is 380. So quarter one comes out as 380. Then in quarter three, in quarter three, I have total as 220, out of which 60 and 70 is 130. From 220, 130 is gone. So what will be the value for August? August will come out as 90. Because my total has to be 220. Very similarly, very similarly for December, I know my total is 500 and 150 and 170 is 320. So the value that I'm missing for December is 180. Now, what is left? What is left is the total value for 2017. So let's try and do that. Uh, 220 and 380 is 600. 500 and 200 is 700. 600 and 700 is 1300. Now, 
Are you guys okay with these values? I have filled up the complete table, the entire table now. That's what you need to do in DI. Look at the data. It is given to us in a pie chart format. Whatever was the missing information, I fill that up. Once again, how did I fill up the missing information? There are multiple ways. When the information about quarter one was missing, I added up these three values for individual months. When the value for May and June was missing, I used the idea of an arithmetic progression and found out the values as 40, 50 and 60. The value for quarter three was missing. So that was July plus August plus September, giving me 250. The value for November and December was missing. Again, I applied the AP idea. Quarter one, 380, some of these three. Quarter two, 200, some of these three. Uh, in this, August was missing, total was given. So 220 minus 70 and 60 gave me the value as 90. And 500 being the total here, 150 and 170 being 320, the value missing for December was 180. For the complete year, for the complete year, I could have added all these 12 months, but that will take a lot of effort. Instead, I just started all the quarters, got 1300 for 2017, got uh, 1000 for 2016. Are you okay with these values? Please let me know if there is any value in this that you disagree with, if there is any value in this that you did not understand, how did it come? How do I need to, you know, calculate that? Because this is essentially what solving a DI question is. Finding out the missing value. This is a pure DI question. No logic was used. Just interpret the data and calculate the answer. So when I said, you remember that in LRDI, in LRDI, there will be three questions which will be pure LR and one question will be LRDI combo. It is not that, it is this category. This is a pure DI question. Yes, you get less of them, but it doesn't mean that you don't get, it doesn't mean you don't need to prepare for that. So as I had mentioned, I'm starting a batch on the 4th of August. In this batch, I will be covering DI. My classes in this batch are starting from the 9th of August. I would request you to please join before that. For those of you like uh, Devarsh and Utkarsh uh, and Ketan who are already subscribed, you can Find the link for the course from my profile. You can go ahead and join it from there. Alternatively, I've also given you the link as the pinned message on this chat. You can get it from there as well. Skill building. Do you remember I was talking about what all consists of skill building? This is what skill building is. For math, you need speed math. For GK, current affairs, vocabulary and grammar, puzzles. All of these things will help you uh, perform well in the exam. For those of you who are, in, who are in your final year, if you buy a subscription before the 4th of August, we'll provide you with a free personal mock test in GD as well. That'll help you with your campus placement, especially if you come from an engineering background. And for those of you who don't want to pay, well, there is a scholarship test that we conduct every Sunday. You can unlock that scholarship test by using the coupon code HANDA. The toppers in that get the uh, subscription for free. Now, uh, these are some of the questions that we had on the set. Let's have a look at them. What is the percentage increase in sales in December 2017 compared to the sales in December 2016? So we look at December 2016 data and December 2017 data and we try and figure out that how much is the improvement. So 2016 December is 140. 2017 is 180. So we are going from 140 to 180, which is an increase of 40. 40 on a base of 140 is effectively 2 by 7. Now I don't know how much 2 by 7 is, but from a fraction perspective, I know 1 by 7 is 14.28. And if 1 by 7 is 14.28, 2 by 7 is going to be 28.56. Do we have an option? Yes, we have option D, which is 28.57. Question 2. In which quarter of 2017 
was the percentage increase from the same quarter of 2016 the highest so i need quarter 1 quarter 2 quarter 3 quarter 4 i need the uh, data for you know these four months these four quarters for both the years so let's try and gather that data twenty sixteen and twenty seventeen So, 2016. Please try and remember the values. If I can't, 240, 150, two fifty, one fifty, three sixty. Two forty, one fifty. I forgot. Two fifty and three sixty. Two fifty and three sixty. What are my values? For two thousand and seventeen, to is three eighty two hundred two twenty five hundred. Okay, thank you, Aman, for noting down these values. I will just put these in. So three eighty two hundred two twenty and five hundred. Now, what you need to do is, do you need to calculate the exact percentage of growth? No, you don't. Even if you have approximate numbers, that is fine because all you need to do is you need to figure out where is the growth maximum. Now, two fifty to two twenty, this is actually falling, which means quarter three cannot be my answer. One fifty to two hundred, this is an increase of thirty three point three three, because it is one third. and it is very easy for me to figure out when something is one third now 240 what is one third of 240 80 so this is definitely more than one third 360 to 500 what is one third of 360 360 one third is 120 so this is also definitely more than one third if two of them are more than one third Quarter two, which had exactly one third, that is ruled out. Now you look at individual values for quarter one and quarter four. In quarter one, you are going up by hundred and forty on a base of two eighty. In quarter four, you are again going up by hundred and forty on a base of three hundred and sixty. The numerators are same. The denominator is smaller here. It is actually fifty percent. you know instead of taking this as i should simply take this is also an easy calculation to make this is 50% this is greater than 1/3 but it is less than 50% which means my answer will be quarter 1 oh 140 by 240 One forty by two forty. So this is even actually greater than fifty percent. Also, this is significantly greater than fifty percent. So very clearly, option B becomes my answer. Quarter one is the answer. Aman is okay with that. I hope others are okay with it as well. Then, during which quarter was the percentage decrease in sales from the previous quarter? Sales the highest. Okay, so what we need to check is percentage decrease from the previous quarter was the highest. So quarter two of twenty sixteen. Quarter two of twenty sixteen. Quarter two of twenty sixteen from two forty to one fifty. I'll just note down the values first. This is. Two forty to one fifty. This is a fall of roughly ninety. This is a fall of roughly ninety, or a little more than 
one third or 33.33 percent. Okay. Quarter two of 2017. Quarter two of 2017, 380 to 200. Okay, this looks quite significant. Three eighty to two hundred. That's uh, you know, hundred and eighty on a base of three hundred and eighty. That is around a little less than fifty. A little less than fifty, but I will put it maybe around forty-five, fifty percent. I think forty-five percent is a good enough approximation. I think forty-five percent is a good enough approximation. Uh, so then, for the first one also. I'll take an approximation of how much is this. So it's a little more than 33%. I'll take this as roughly 35%. Bad approximations. If you know two of the values come really close, then I will investigate them uh, more thoroughly. More thoroughly. But as of now, I'm going with approximations. Quarter four of 2017. Quarter four of 2017, there is an increase. Um, did I read the values wrong? From 220 to 500, there is a huge increase. So this cannot be answered. No need to even check the value. We want to know how much the dip is. 35%, 45%. This was actually increasing, so I will not even bother with the value. The quarter one of 2017. So quarter one of 2017, that is also an increase from 360. It is going to 380. So again, I will not bother with it. Again, I will not bother with it because this is also increasing. So I will not bother with option D as well. Among A and B, among A and B, I already have approx percentages as 35 and 45. Clearly 45, uh, even with bad approximations, this is significantly higher. The fall in quarter two of 2017 making option B as my answer here. Aman is absolutely right. Final question that we have for today on your screen. During which month was the percentage increase in sales from the previous month's sales the highest? Okay. So now I need to see month on month growth where it is highest. October of 2017. October of 2017 from 70 to 150. That's quite huge. Maybe the answer from 70 to 150. That is more than, you know, 110%. This is more than 110%. B, October of 2016. October of 2016 from 55 to 100. So 55 to 100, whatever it is, it's less than 100%. It's not even doubling. Cannot be my answer. See, March of 2016. March of 2016 from 60 to 100. Again, not even doubling. Less than 100%. Cannot be the answer. March of 2017. March of 2017, where is it? 100 to 160. Hundred to 160, very easy to calculate the percentage growth. It is 60%, but again, not even close to the growth that we had in A, which was more than 100% or greater than 110% to be precise, making option A as my answer here. Are you guys okay with this? Option A being the answer. So Shantanu and Shantanu who just joined us, probably the same guy. Well, this is, uh, I'm sorry Shantanu, but we were kind of wrapping up when you joined. This is the last question that we had for today. Let me just remind you, for all Unacademy students, we have an Ask a Doubt feature where you can click a picture, send it to us. Either me or someone from our team will clarify the doubt for you. Uh, if you're planning to get an Unacademy subscription, please remember to use the coupon code HANDA, which will give you a 10% off. 
And uh, in case you have any follow-up queries, anything you want to know about an academy courses, please feel free to reach out to me on my mail ID, which is hkftout at the rate gmail.com. I would request you to please provide positive feedback at the end of the class. You'll get an option with a smiley face and all of that. The better feedback that I get, more such classes I will be allowed to take on the platform. So, uh, you know, it's uh, imperative uh, that uh, for me to have good feedback to be able to take more classes. And a lot of these classes are free. So if you want to, uh, you know, continue learning for free and uh, want me to, uh, you know, keep on taking these classes, please provide positive feedback at the end. And on that note, I'll end this class. Thank you, Aman. Thank you, everyone else for attending this. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye, guys. Bye, Satman.